hold on. This is Karen Fields. She is the author of Organic Vegetable Gardening in the Tropics, and she's going to tell us how to make a worm motel. Please tell us how you do it and why you do it. Well, we love worms because worms are great for the soil. Worms make tunnels in the soil and uh, improve the soil texture, and that's what we want. They're, they kind of like improve the things around them, just like people, they want a nice uh, uh, copacetic atmosphere, so they do that in the soil. So this is a really nice project because it's real cheap and it's real cool because kids love worms. So I went to Publix, I went to the grocery store and I got one of these plastic uh, pitchers. Uh, I went to the beach, you fill this up with about four inches of sand on the bottom, mm -hmm. then you tear up some newspaper, then you put a little compost, and then you put a couple worms. Now, after the kids have their lunch today, what they're going to do is they're going to take some of their fruit scraps, their vegetables and their fruits, not their uh, citrus peels, uh, but their fruit scraps, and they're going to put it on the top of here. So these worms are going to be able to crawl all through here and have a really nice, happy atmosphere. And as you can mm -hmm. see, there's holes for them to breathe. There's holes here for them to breathe. Mm -hmm. And there's some holes down here. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, this won't smell. But if it does, we'll just put the cover down right now. I just want to keep it a jar because mm -hmm. I want the worms to get as much uh, oxygen as possible. Mm -hmm. um, but if it starts to smell a little bit, we just put it outside. Okay. Now, is it necessary to add water to any of this? No. The worms will, will take care of that. The worms will take care of that? Mm -hmm. And so there's a little bit of natural moisture in the compost and that pretty much works? Yes. Okay. And then when is it is it time to put the worms actually in your garden? Well. Um, I would put them in my garden now instead of putting them here. Uh -huh. My garden's not ready. Okay. So I would actually just, after they're in here and when our garden is ready, the, I'll have the kids just take them out and put them in. Okay. Um, it's not a step that you have to do before you put worms in your garden. Uh -huh. I'm just doing it because I want to see the kids scream. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you will walk over here with us and uh -huh. so we can see some of the things you've planted here at Padilla Classical Academy. Okay. Um, and what you're teaching the kids to grow. Okay, well, since we're coming at the, to the end of the summer and mm -hmm. the beginning of the winter, we've still got our summer crops, mm -hmm. and these are sweet potatoes. Uh -huh. And sweet potatoes grow like rampant here in the south okay. in the summer. Uh, one of the easiest painless crops to grow in the summer because it is pretty hot here. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, um, what we do is we take a, a, a mother potato, mm -hmm. a, a seed potato uh -huh. it's called, now, as you can see, some of the kids are really tiny, and they like to <laughs> they get to, so excited. They like to root in the dirt, they, yeah. They, they, they've taken the potatoes out, unfortunately, in this one. So mm -hmm. let me see if this plant is still producing potatoes, because mm -hmm. it looks like the mother potato has been taken out, both of them. Okay, All let's right. go to this guy. All right. Okay, here's the mother plant right here. And mm -hmm. as you can see, another kid took another potato out. Mm -hmm. This would have been a potato. Um, they, they're very curious and they get very anxious. That's why when I work with kids, I usually only like to work with lettuce and radishes mm -hmm. because they get ready in about four weeks mm -hmm. and then I don't run into this problem. Okay, here's one here, you can oh. see. Um, this one here oh. goes down in the soil and it, we'll pick it mm -hmm. when it gets a little fat. Oh, here's a okay. couple more right here, All under right. here. This is a good one. Oh, uh -huh. this is a big one. Uh, Maybe we should you want it? You get up? Oh, that is a big one. Well, it's yeah, it's not too bad. It's bigger than the other ones. Right. Uh, let's see, what we got here. Uh -huh. Here's one. Uh -huh. Now you can see it's a little green at the top. The reason it's green at the top is because it's not under the soil, mm -hmm. and the sun is is making it turn green. Mm -hmm. We don't want to eat that part. Okay. So when we take it out of the soil, we're gonna cut that All right. off. Um, here's another, oh, oh, here's one down here. This is going to be a good one. Okay. This one's, yeah. See that guy down there? Uh-huh. Yeah. It's just got a couple more weeks. And All then right. we've got our basil lift. Yay. Uh-huh. Our basil lift. Yeah, All right. I don't know. Somebody must have done this. What is this? Radish. These are mm -hmm. bells. These are great. We're going to plant, probably plant these first if we can keep them alive, if okay. they, they keep them wet. So these are radishes. Yeah. I love doing radishes with kids mm -hmm. really fast. Okay. And what kind of radishes? Just the regular red radishes that we all know? Yeah, they're called okay. cherry bells, but I also uh -huh. like to work with the um, Japanese radishes, like uh -huh. the miyashi, uh -huh. which is a radish that gets, it grows like a carrot. Right, the white ones? Yeah, the, yes. yeah. and I love to see their faces as they pull it out of the soil. It's really okay. fun to, to okay. watch them pull. Okay. 
That's great. Uh, thank you so much, Karen Fields, author of Organic Vegetable Gardening in the Tropics.